Let's talk about The Sopranos lawyers. Arcady. I don't want to minimize your position, Corrado. Two prior convictions. That places you in jeopardy of sentence under the habitual offender statute. We first meet Malvoin in season one, and he's Junior Soprano's lawyer until the end of season five, after which Junior fires him and hires another guy that we'll see a bit later on in this video. The government attorneys here want him at the very least to wear an ankle bracelet. Runner, I take offense at the characterization of my client as a mafioso. Mr. Soprano has not been found guilty of anything. He's awaiting trial for alleged offenses. Mr. Soprano is suffering from a very benign illness, a few clogged arteries, Your Honor. The wheels of justice turn slowly. Take her to Florida. Develop a tan. Where's the key to the partner's crapper? Top right-hand drawer. <laughs> Famous for his Neil Mink lecture series, is Tony Soprano's lawyer all the way up until the very end, including in the series finale, where he tells Tony that someone is going to testify against him at trial. The subpoenas are flying. You want to give me a real gift? Insulate yourself from these shenanigans. I told you once already. Get your ass out of that strip club and go there. The feds just hit Johnny Sack. You heard anything? I had Gendler on my cell phone all the way over here. All right, talk to Mike Gendler. Attorney Mike Gendler is someone that Neil Mink brings up on a couple of different occasions. We never see him, but just wanted to note that. Millions of tax dollars invested in watching your ass. Sooner or later, just like you, they're going to want to return on that investment. Joan Cusimano. She's an officer of the court, but Carmela prefers the less formal term, lawyer. Carmela asks Joan Cusimano to write a recommendation letter from Meadow to Georgetown, and when she refuses, Carmela uses some of that mob wife muscle. <laughs> well, we actually don't know if Joan ever wrote the letter. I said I want you to write the letter. Are you threatening me? Threat? What threatening? I'm an officer of the court. A lawyer. I'll tell you, though, the main thing about getting married, I can never be called to testify. Actually, though, I don't think that's actually true. After Adriana decides that she and Christopher should get married because a wife can't testify against a husband, from what she's seen on TV anyway, her friend tells her that that's actually not true in many cases. So she goes to an attorney for a free consultation and the attorney essentially confirms what her friend said. In an organized crime, Rico, the feds will spend a fortune putting on their case. Believe me, if they want you to testify, they're gonna find a way. Now, if only she'd gone to that attorney, or any attorney, after first being approached by the FBI. Corrado Soprano is not some harmless old man, but a ruthless and calculating mob boss who controls a vast criminal enterprise. He fucked up his six-figure future with old Melvany and Myers when he blew the Junior Soprano trial. Of course he'll keep trying it until he fixes that. Now, this is Junior Soprano's second lawyer, who, as I mentioned, Junior hires to defend him after he's arrested for shooting Tony, because Melvoin's paralyzed hand from his stroke made Junior nervous. You dismissed Mr. Melvoin as your attorney and hired me. Because of his paralyzed hand from his stroke, it made you nervous. Mr. Federal Attorney, what can I do for you? The popcorn fart attorney he just had to have his cheap headline, which, by the way, reminds me of when Syl is getting arrested at Jackie Jr.'s funeral and yells, popcorn headlines, but I digress. The federal attorney here is very angry because, as he said, they've been putting a RICO case together for the past five years, well, trying to anyway, on Tony Soprano, but the state wanted that headline. Your Honor, the police pulled over some kid and found a baggie with cocaine residue. They also found a gun loaded with hollow point bullets on the floor. Now, in order to beat the rap, this 16-year-old punk claims he saw my client drop that weapon. And mind you, not yesterday, but over two years ago. Remember when is the lowest form of conversation, huh? 
indictments are part of an ongoing investigation. We see this press conference on TV in the season one finale, I Dream of Jeannie Cusimano, and this is right after Junior and some of his associates had been arrested. It's still up to the judge, but they're going to recommend 15 years. This guy is Johnny Sachs' lawyer, who we meet in season six. Is this all part of your plan, Ron? Make me so fucking depressed that I hang myself? It's my obligation to raise the idea again of cooperating. I don't want to hear that shit again. Good. Because frankly, I don't represent turncoats. And he works with Johnny and gets him to agree to plead guilty and do the allocution in order to get a 15 year prison sentence along with the seizure of most of his assets. In an allocution, the defendant is speaking directly to the judge in the court and the judge asks the defendant directly if he or she has anything to add prior to hearing their official sentence, such as an apology, offering remorse, explanation of motivations, or in this case, admitting the existence of La Cosa Nostra. You're a young man. In 15 years, you'll be 67. The golden years. You know the allocution is always part of it. Practically the whole point. Carmela tells Tony that these guys know how to play hardball when she thinks they are gonna represent her. And I think to myself, um, did you forget what your husband does for a living? See, I don't understand this. Why is my husband so picky? He talked to seven or eight of the top divorce attorneys in New Jersey. Well, you can probably figure that maneuver out for yourself. I handled a case once where the husband owned vending machines. I used a forensic accountant to reconstruct his finances. In less than a week, he outlined 11 years of income. And in less than a week, that lawyer got scared shitless of Tony Soprano and decided not to represent Carmela after all. So, what does this mean? You don't want the case? Well, as my partners reminded me, I do have a full caseload already. Well, he's got no shortage of lawyers here. We don't learn too much about Patrick, aside from this conversation. By the end of the series, she's decided she wants to go to law school. And Patrick Parisi, her boyfriend slash fiance, is already an attorney. And he says there's a spot for her at the firm where he works as soon as she finishes law school. We got a really interesting case right now. We're defending James Trifolio, the county commissioner in those corruption charges. This guy's a lawyer, and he's Dr. Melfi's date from season one, episode four, Meadowlands. You may remember him as the guy that got pulled over by Detective Vin McKazian. That was an unfortunate situation. But anyway, when Vin makes him step out of the car, he tells Vin that he knows his rights, he's an attorney, and then that escalated from there. All right, uh, I'm a lawyer. I know I'm under the limit, okay? Open the trunk, please. Expect to hear from Goldstein, Baum, and Warrenov. They'll be representing Miss Willis in the lawsuit. You gonna sue? With what I pay in retainers? Fuck yeah. I hear that. My lawyers have done a little research. I think that the final figure is somewhere around $400,000. Right, Alan Sappinsley. Alan Sappinsley, AKA Mr. I'll tort you into the poorhouse, except when it comes to Tony Soprano. Qualify for financing, and we gave him this god awful 90 day escrow. Dr. Kim, I spent 10 years as a litigator. Buy this property, I'll make your life a misery. I can tort you into the poorhouse. Maximum value is the big picture. Assemblyman Zellman serves in the New Jersey State Legislature, so while we don't really see him practicing law, he is an attorney by profession. Look thirsty last time I saw you. <laughs> Who's your favorite? Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this latest video. What'd you think?